In a previous video, we looked at the break-even point for a firm. That is, at what level of sales do we need in order for earnings before interest and taxes to be equal to zero? Now I want to extend that discussion by looking at something referred to as operating leverage. Operating leverage deals with how much fixed costs are in the company's, the firm's cost structure. Now, think about it. A firm, there are a lot of ways for a firm to produce a product. For example, Ford could use lots of laborers to put windshields into cars. That would be a variable cost. The more cars they build, the more they have to pay the employees to put windshields into cars, the more hours they'll work. The other option is, is they could make an investment, a capital investment, in a, in a robotics machine that would put the windshields into the cars. That would be a fixed cost because they would be paying for that machine whether they put one windshield in or put thousands of windshields in. Now the advantage of using this leverage by using more fixed costs in your structure is that as you produce more you're able to your, your earnings before interest and taxes will rise faster than your sales. You'll get this um, leverage effect. So if sales go up by 10%, EBIT might go up by 15% or 20% or 30% depending on the amount of leverage that's being used. There's also a downside to this. The downside happens to be if, if uh, you have to cut back. What happens if sales fall off? Well, unlike using um, employees to put windshields into cars. There you can cut back their hours. Perhaps some of them will be laid off. Okay, You'll reduce your variable cost. The fixed cost, the, the cost of that machine is the same whether you're using it or not. So what we want to do is we want to look at something referred to as operating leverage. And so there's a formula and the degree of operating leverage is going to be the percentage change in EBIT divided by the percentage change in sales. And so it's best to look at this uh, through an example. And let's go back to the example we were doing before. The example we did before, we had fixed cost of $2,500, price of $10, uh, variable cost of five dollars and let's say for example we're producing a thousand units well what's our EBIT going to be our EBIT is going to be revenues minus cost and the revenues are going to be price times quantity minus the fixed cost minus the variable cost. Variable cost being the variable cost price or cost per unit. I keep using the same notation. I probably should use perhaps a small v for that. Um, times the amount of units we produce. So let's see what we have here. We have a price of ten dollars. We're producing a thousand units. The fixed cost are twenty five hundred and the variable cost are five dollars times a thousand units. So it's going to be ten thousand minus twenty five hundred minus five thousand so that's twenty five hundred. What happens if quantity goes up? If quantity goes up to let's say fifteen hundred then our EBIT Okay. This is a 50% increase in quantity. Our EBIT is going to be 10 times 1,500 minus the 2,500 minus the 5 times quantity 1,500. And if you do that, that's going to be 15,000 minus 2,500 minus 7,500 
or 5,000. So let's think about that. Going from 2,500 to 5,000 is a 100% increase. All right, if you would like, we can put the formula down here. The percentage change in EBIT is going to be equal to the 5,000 minus the 2,500. Okay, so it's the new EBIT minus the old EBIT divided by the old EBIT. So that's going to be 2,500 over 2,500 or 1, okay, which is 100%. And you can do the same for sales. 1,500 minus 1,000 divided by 1,000 would be 500 over 1,000. That's 50%. So let's plug into our equation here. So we have the percentage change is 100% divided by 50%. And so we're going to have an operating leverage of 2. This is good if sales go up. If sales go up, we're going to see a big jump in our earnings before interest in taxes. On the flip side of the story, if sales were to go down by 50%, we would see our, our EBIT go down by 100%. So using leverage can be good if things turn out for the better, but if things turn out for the worse, they can, they can be devastating. So how much fixed cost should be in the structure of a firm? That depends. I mean, there are advantages to using using more fixed cost, but the downside is that you really can't reduce those fixed costs if business slows. So this is this is one of the things. You have different types of businesses. Some businesses use a lot of operating leverage. Others are basically labor intensive and use a lot of or use very little operating leverage. So when business is slow they just reduce the number of employees or they cut back on their hours. But if you happen to be using a lot of fixed cost in your structure, you're not going to be re able to reduce that. So if the economic times get become difficult, okay, your firm is going to be hit a lot harder than a firm that doesn't use much operating leverage.